I know a lot of cats that just a few years ago was some wild boy. I actually think I fall into this category as well, to be honest with you. But but it's something about having a little one that just has a way of, of calming you down. It's not like you just ha, instantly perfect and you're never gonna make a mistake again, but it give you that extra motivation to walk away from that fight. Wake up early or stay up late and work on your business. Or in Monte Ball's case, put the bottle down. Sometimes this new motivation builds great habits that last for a lifetime, but sometimes the novelty wears off pretty quick. In those cases, you soon find yourself caught in the same destructive loop that you was caught in before. But only time will tell which one will Monte Ball be? Of course, here at Film Low Raps, y'all, we wishing them the best. Everybody in the comment section is not a hater. Wishing them the best. And hopefully Monte can stay on the right path. But whatever happened to Monte Ball? Let's get it. Yeah, I'm no quitter, cause I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go getter. Monte Ball was born in Kansas, but grew up in Missouri. His parents are Monte Sr. and Melissa Ball. Now it's important to note here early that Monte's dad was an alcoholic. Also, Monte's dad's dad was an alcoholic. So yeah, his father and his grandfather were both alcoholics and they were both said to have had issues with domestic abuse. Monte wouldn't let this affect him though. Not at this point. As a high school freshman, he rushed for over a thousand yards. As a high school senior, he rushed for 2,000 yards. But his junior season he nearly had more rushing yards than his freshman and his senior year combined now if you look slow in the math that's over 3,000 yards son i'm like damn <laughs> we do a lot of these but 3,000 rushing yards sheesh he also had 32 touchdowns and won player of the year also fun fact he wasn't no dummy made the all academic list three times as well good job bro Monte decided to attend the University of Wisconsin. That first year, he put up a modest 391 yards and four TDs. He was actually playing behind the would-be Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, though, John Clay. Now that offseason, Clay had to have ankle surgery, so the following year, Monte got a way bigger role in the offense. So as a sophomore at Wisconsin, he ran for 996 yards just under a thousand with 18 touchdowns. Dude's a scoring machine, right? Now, just like in high school, Monte's best year in college would be his junior season. I'm th three times the charm, I guess. He rushed for just under 2,000 yards and he put up 33 touchdowns, but that ain't it. He also caught six touchdowns and he threw one and he can pass. He got the record for most touchdowns in the season, most consecutive games with two or more touchdowns and he scored the most points ever by a non-kick. Now, strangely enough, that season is when the trouble really started to brew behind the scenes. Throughout that entire amazing season, Monte was getting lit three, four times a week. I mean, drinking to excess three to four times a week. He said like, if he knew they had like a lighter practice the next day, oh, he was drunk the night before. He'll wake up hungover, go hit the steam room, sweat it out, he practice like nothing happened. Now, if you don't know, it's a thousand percent fact that alcoholism has a ton to do with your genetics. You can be genetically predisposed to being at a higher risk of becoming addicted. And like we talked about earlier, Monte's dad and his granddad both had issues with alcohol. That actually makes up for about 50% of it, believe it or not, man. Now, of course, there's other factors. There's stress, different things going on in your life, or just different triggers, different things that could trigger it. But it is a fact that Monte was genetically predisposed to this condition. Now, during Monte's senior year, he actually got jumped by a group of, I've read conflicting reports, some said three guys, some said five, doesn't matter, he got jumped. And he actually got hurt pretty bad, man. He suffered a concussion and some other injuries. Now, at the time, all of the news articles say in an unprovoked attack. Based on what we know now about Monte, pretty sure that's not true. But while some people won't like this, I actually think it's kind of good that the university may have protected Monte, or maybe they really didn't know. But here's why I'm like 99% sure it was provoked, okay? First off, it happened on a Wednesday morning at 2 a.m. So we know Monte started drinking heavy the year before, okay? As no, he never said he stopped drinking at any point 
during his whole run. He goes out on a Tuesday night, stays out to Wednesday morning, it's 2 a.m. and he randomly gets jumped by some cats. He probably was drinking and he probably did something that these guys took as disrespect. And even though it's super weak of them to jump up, like, just, let's just fight, bro. But of course, we all know how this goes. It's not always fair. Either way, unprovoked. I, that's, I know that's inaccurate. Like, I know that's inaccurate. Maybe he tried to holler at one of their chicks or he might have, like, push one of them like in a crowd or something like that. I'm guessing the stuff, cause these are all things that I've done and could have possibly been jumped for. So honestly, these are just stabs in the dark, but I'm honestly willing to bet on them. Fortunately though, he would recover from this and go on to have another beastly season. Monte Ball would go on to become the most prolific scorer in Division One FBS football history. He scored a total of 83 touchdowns. In 2012, he won the Duke Walker Running Back Award, and his season totals for that year were 1,850 yards with 22 TD. All right, fun fact, he was also the first player in the history of the Rose Bowl to score a touchdown in the game three years straight. All right, man, the next year, bro, 2013, Monte was drafted in the second round by the Denver Broncos. And he had a decent year, man, 559 yards and four TDs as the backup running back. Denver even made it to the Super Bowl that year, even though they didn't get the dub. And now that Monte was in the league, he was good, he was fulfilled, not quite. Even throughout that entire rookie season, Monte continued partying and the heavy drinking, bro. He described the NFL as lonely and too money driven. He said it took the joy out of the game. And a couple of the people that he got close to early on at Denver all got traded away. And he cites that as one of the things that just hit him early that, you know, helped to just continue to feed into this addiction that he already had. Now, Monte was tripping hard, bro. He admits that he literally ignored every single piece of advice that he got. Advice that's so common that even us that never played in the NFL know this advice. Surround yourself with good people, take care of your body, etc. No exaggeration, he literally did the exact opposite of all of this stuff. He said he used to be like texting or on Instagram anytime this advice was being given. He had surrounded himself with leeches who really only wanted to have a free good time. And at this point, bro, he had his drinking down to a science. Like, check it out. He would drink heavily on Sunday nights, Monday night, Thursdays, and Fridays. That's just heavily. He probably was still drinking on those other nights. So he was falling deeper and deeper into addiction and this was obviously wrecking his body as well. So you thinking like somebody had to be noticing that was around him, right? Well, at one point his running backs coach did come to him and say, yo bro, I smell the alcohol on you. I think you may have a problem. We need to get you some help. But Monte was in denial at this point, bro. He said he was fine, kept pushing. The next season Monte got hurt then got released. By the time he actually got a call from the Packers to come in and try out, he had already gained 30 pounds, bro. Soon after that, he found himself on the Patriots practice squad. Not long after, Monte was arrested for domestic violence. He was accused of pushing his then girlfriend through a table. Now he denies that, but he said he did push her while he was trying to leave. He also admits to having been drunk during this whole thing. So with something like this, I'm not gonna sit here and try to make no assumptions on camera. I'm gonna just let everybody out there make their own assumption about how that situation went. One thing is for sure, at this point, just like his father and just like his grandfather, Monte was a full-fledged alcoholic who had now engaged in some sort of domestic violence. And finally, he started to recognize these patterns in his family. What made him stop and think about this? He was in jail after the domestic violence. You think he just got away with that? Now get this, while he was in prison, the team that drafted him, yeah, that's right, was playing in the Super Bowl again, and this time, they would bring home the dub. Here's what Monte had to say about it. It brought tears to my eyes. At one point, I was on top of the world, and now I'm watching the team that cut me a few months ago from a jail cell. That stung a lot. Now, not long after that, Bunte had been accused of several other things, but he ended up selling all of them out of court. Sometimes that's an admission of guilt. Sometimes people just don't want to go through the, uh, the legal system. You can decide for yourself on that. But while dealing with all of that, he got another call from another woman, from another relationship. 
But this time, thankfully, it was different. She told Monte he was the father of a six month old child. He got a paternity test and he was the dad. Here's Monte on being a father. That was the turning point. I finally realized I have a purpose. That's a responsibility that I'll gladly take. So finally, motivated by this new life that he's brought into the world and is now responsible for. Monte got help with his drinking through counseling. Got that under control, got back on his feet, man. Fixed his relationship with his father as his fallout with his dad was cited as one of the things that probably made the alcoholism worse. And if they're both recovered or recovering alcoholics, I can imagine that the bond there should be pretty damn strong. Just because of the struggle that very few people could relate to. Imagine a father and son both admitting they got an issue, working through it, and then being able to bond through the recovery process. It's pretty cool. Monte began using his platform by participating in mental health programs, and he plans to start his own foundation coming up here soon. He's also writing a book about his troubles with drinking, and I plan to pick it up whenever it drops. And I'll probably do a review on the channel of it. Cause yeah, I'm a nerd and I read books. Deal with it. Also, Wisconsin offers a re-entry program where all of his former athletes can come back and complete their degrees, which is so dope. I don't know if all universities do that. They should. That's, that's real dope, Wisconsin. So using that program, Monte is also finishing up his sociology degree, and he's not trying to make a comeback to football. He just wants to get his life together, and it seems like he's definitely on the right track, man. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. I like when the story have like a hopeful ending, you know what I'm saying? And I'll leave y'all with this, man. Sometimes it's hard to admit that you got a problem. But when you start living for more than just yourself, i.e. your family, like that fuel can take you a long way. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go.